<laughs> yeah. Rolling. Sounds fair. Okay, hey everyone. So I'm Armand, as most of you know. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, aerodynamics, giving you guys like a brief overview, uh, a little bit of theory, uh, some history, some other things like that. So, first question is why aero? Um, essentially, um, you want to build the fastest car you can, right? So, uh, like one of the like most important factors with getting around a track is the grip of the tires. So you can have a ton of power in your car, but if you don't have a lot of grip in your tires to get that power down, you're just not going to go anywhere. And uh, a lot of people have like personal experience with this when you like pull your car. Uh, sometimes you get some wheel spin before you actually get traction and you're able to move. Um, so grip is a really important factor. Um, and the grip is proportional to the normal force on the tires. Um, so how does arrow fit into this? Well, basically with arrow, you're able to take advantage of all this quick moving fluid around the car uh, to, to create load, to create ground force. And this effectively is increasing the load of the tires, which allows you to take corners at faster speeds. Um, and it's free, so there's some small weight for the aero components, but essentially you're just capitalizing on what's already there. So what are the disadvantages? Um, I mentioned a little bit the weight, um, but again, it's like pretty minor compared to the, the benefits you're seeing in ground force. Um, there are some drag penalties, like as you can see here, there's like the McLaren P1. Um, that massive wing you see there is obviously not improving the, the drag of that vehicle. So there is a drag penalty there. But for most like racing applications, uh, like that force is the most important factor. It's only when you're looking at things uh, like efficiency challenges and things like that where you need to minimize, really minimize drag. So here's like a, a cool little graph, and I see got a cut off there, but um, this was taken from Race Car Aerodynamics by Joseph Katz, and it shows a brief history from 1910 to like roughly 2000 um, of like record one lap speeds um, at the Indianapolis, Indianapolis Speedway. Um, so it's in miles per hour, the y-axis, and you can see that from like the early 1900s, it starts off pretty low at like you know 90 miles an hour, 85 miles an hour. Um, and there's like a positive trend, like as you go through time, you're seeing cars get faster and faster. You have like a nice slope here. And then you'll notice like in the early 60s, the slope kind of jumps like pretty pretty dramatically. And you get a really big jump in 19, around 1978 from there to there. And so what this is, is actually when the race car designers were learning more about aerodynamics and how it affects the vehicle. Um, so in 1972, where you said big jump, is the first time they were really able to make effective use of front rear wings. And so like the, the improvement in lap time is obvious like from this point onwards. And that's why we see it in, in racing today. So some very basic theory about how wings work. Uh, this is an inverted air propel, so this is what we see on the car. Um, essentially, you have air being split. So you have air that travels over the top of the wing, air that travels under the wing. Um, and the idea is that the like because of the profile of the wing, the air under the wing is condensed and made and made to come together. Um, so this this decrease in like the area, the cross-sectional area, if you're thinking about like the tube, for example, encompassing this wing, um, forces the air to speed up, and that increase in speed uh, creates a drop in pressure for the underside of the wing, and the reverse is true for the top side of the wing. So it's this pressure gradient that creates your downforce. So I talked a little bit about the wing in that previous one. Um, so that's one way that race car <coughs> engineers improve downforce on a vehicle is by designing these front rear wings. But another really important aspect is body shaping in general. Um, and for things like that, you're looking at like the under tray, you're looking at any scoops, uh, any, any other ways of basically controlling the air around the vehicle to improve downforce and decrease drag. So a little more theory here. Um, an, a really important concept uh, with aerodynamics is flow attachment. Um, essentially, attached flow is what gives you the best results in terms of drag and downforce. Um, on like a regular car like you see here, um, you have separated flow, and that separated flow is really bad for drag. Um, so that's an important concept to keep in mind as we move forward. Another one is the boundary layer. Um, so essentially, um, and I can, I'll start off with a simple example. If you have like a flat plate in free streaming air, um, there's an effect that flat plate has on the air, and what that is essentially is that at the 
the surface of that interface, the air is slowed theoretically down to zero velocity. Um, and so there's a region created around any part that's traveling through air, known as the boundary layer, where the air is affected by the by the re by the object that's there. Um, and so what you see is that at the boundary, at the surface, you have like really low speeds, really low air speeds, and then as you approach the the like intersection, the boundary layer point between like the air that's affected by the boundary and the air that's affected by the air that's at free stream, you see speeds that approach free free stream. Um, so the boundary layer is important to consider as well, and we'll get to that more in the future as well. So uh, another thing I want to talk about is flow control. So you have like your, your macro scale things, like the wings, the under tray, um, and then you can look for all these systems. You can look at controlling the flow around them and through them. Um, so there's different devices that you can use to do this. Um, one example is like a fence device, and an example of that on our code would be the end plates. So, it's essentially just a block um, that's designed to prevent air from traveling in certain directions. Um, so sometimes you'll see this on airplanes as well, like along the span of a large wing, uh, you have several vertical fences that prevent any transverse flow from occurring. Um, and the reason we do that for our car for that place is that it, you can prevent air from spilling over along the sides from the high pressure region on top to the low pressure region on the bottom. Um, and another, another great direction flow is what's something called the guide vane. And I'm going to go back to the picture we saw here of the Ferrari. Um, so here you can see like this little lip here um, towards like just in front of the rear wheel. Uh, that's the type of guide vane. And what, what that's doing is directing air um, around the vehicle. And in this case, it's directing air towards the top of the rear wheels. Uh, if you have the air like hitting the rear wheels directly, you're creating a lot of additional drag. By directing the air just to the top of the rear wheel, you can actually decrease drag and improve that force. So that's another type of flip control. Um, another one is a vortex generator, and I have one here. This was brought to us recently. Um, so I'm just going to hand this to you and just pass that around. Essentially what that's doing is creating uh, two vortices. And you might be wondering, like, what's important about vortices? Well, basically what it's doing is it's energizing that slow-moving boundary layer that we had talked about earlier. So if you have your boundary layer, um, if you have go back to the vehicle here. We know that there's like some separation here as the air comes across this sharp edge. Um, so if you introduce something like a vortex generator, you can actually create vortices which mix the air in the like high speed, the, the basically it mixes the high speed moving air and the slow, slow moving air to prevent that separation from occurring, or at the very least to prevent it from occurring uh, well, to prevent uh, the distance over which that occurs. So, like, if uh, sorry, I said that poorly. Like, uh, essentially, you can <coughs> minimize the point at which the flow separates by introducing a vortex generator to energize there. So that's what that's about. Um, and in that, and the one I just passed around, that creates two vortices. 